Hey friends, it's Cherie, and in today's video, I'm doing a little sewing catch up. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. I'm excited to finally sit down and film something. I hadn't been able to film for a couple of weeks because I was very sick. I went from having a mild cold that turned into a really hard cold and then I had a virus and it was just like snowballing. I kept getting sicker and sicker. And so for a couple of weeks, I couldn't even talk. Like my voice was pretty much completely gone. And so I'm back. I can actually talk to you now. I can tell you some of the things that I started working on before I got sick, as well as some things that I purchased and I also received my indie stitch box so I can unbox that with you today. The first thing that I want to share with you probably is going to be what I got for my birthday. So during this absence I had my 43rd birthday and it was one of those birthdays where I wanted to celebrate but there was just so much happening in my life that I didn't really have the time to slow down and do a real celebration but I just thank God for allowing me to see another birthday and I felt really blessed and happy to have been able to go home to Fresno for my birthday and spend time with my grandma who hurt herself and so she was in the hospital so I got to spend my birthday with my grandma and that was so special and then when I came home my children and my husband had cake for me and my husband took me to dinner so that was really nice and I was able to open some some gifts and so my husband actually gifted me a really beautiful get card okay it was a really special beautiful card and inside was a gift card to stone mountain and daughter and that's one of my favorite fabric stores it's here in the bay area and i haven't used it yet i'm saving it because i do have a a lot of fabric you guys I have a lot of fabric and so I feel like I need to make a significant dent in the fabric that I have before I go ahead and purchase anything new I do have my eye on a couple of pieces of fabric that are on my wish list but I'm trying to hold out they are coating fabrics and I have some quilted coat uh, patterns that I want to sew up before I move on to purchasing additional coat fabric. Now I already have a nice selection of jackets that I've been wearing for the past couple of months. All are ready to wear. I have made a couple of jackets but I have only shared one of them I believe here on my channel and it was made um, last year. So I have been wearing the things that I already have and it's going to be interesting to see how I can fit the jackets I plan to make in the next few weeks into my current rotation but I just love making things and challenging myself to try new patterns and um, new techniques and so I'm not going to discourage myself from making all these jackets and coat patterns because for me it's exercising a skill it's learning something new but I do feel a little guilty about the fact that I don't have enough cold days or super super cold days to wear a real jacket where I live um, generally I wear a lighter jacket or sweats or sweaters things of that nature but I really really want to sew these jackets so I'm going to do it and I'm definitely going to pick up some really great fabric from Stone Mountain and Daughter once I sew through some of the things in my stash so that was one thing the other thing is I had mentioned in a previous video that I would be purchasing some tools in order to start practicing pattern drafting myself. So I'm going to learn how to make a sloper and also how to transform a sloper into patterns. So I finally purchased one of those textbooks I told you I wanted to get. And this is the Pearson New International Edition Pattern Making for Fashion Designers by Helen Joseph Armstrong. And this is the fifth edition. I got this on Amazon. It's a really big textbook. I've started to read it and so far I've gotten through the section that tells you what all you're going to need in order to begin the drafting process. And I didn't have everything on the list so I've been slowly picking up things as I go along. And so this is a project that I hope to work on during Christmas break when I'm off work for a couple of weeks. 
but I wanted to make sure that I had all the supplies that I needed in order to get started. So in my previous video, I did share with you that I got all the drafting rulers and I didn't get the really expensive ones. I got the plastic rulers that were a little less expensive, um, but I also got some little notching, uh, what are they called, paper punchers. And then I also got these professional tailor pattern storing hooks and this is what they look like. So basically you punch a hole in your patterns and you slip it on the hook and then you hang it up and that keeps them nice and flat and straight rather than folding them up and sticking them in an envelope, which is what I typically do with my paper patterns. So those are the two things that I picked up in order to hopefully achieve that goal I had of teaching myself how to draft patterns. And so I'm excited about those two things. Um, and those are things that I purchased for my birthday. Uh, my dear friend Talisha got me a few birthday presents and I hope she doesn't mind that I share them here because I think they're super cool and I felt really special receiving them. So I am gonna share. Um, she got me some beautiful red lipstick. You guys all know I love red lipstick. I wear red lipstick lipstick a lot on my channel and just out and about in the world and so she got me a really great liquid lipstick and then um, some beautiful bee brooches if you have been with me any length of time you know that I have sewn projects with bees on it and I wear bee themed jewelry often so when I saw these I got really excited because I can attach them to sweaters like what I'm wearing now or jackets or whatever I want to attach them to, but they're really beautiful. And she sent me four of them to kind of mix, mix and match with my outfits. And then she got me something that is really cool, but also very intimidating. And that is the pink um, power cordless electric scissors. So I'm really eager to give these guys a try and see how they work, but I'm also very scared to use them because I don't want to mess up any fabric. But the cool thing about these is that they can be used on cardboard, leather, plastic, metal, fabric, paper, and more. So these are basically an all around cool pair of scissors for every project. So I don't know if you can cut pattern pieces out with this guy, but I think if you're just cutting yardage that it would probably be really nice. If you have some electric scissors and you've been using them to cut patterns, do let me know and let me know if there are any um, challenges that come along with using these. But I'm excited to try them out and I am so thankful. Thank you, Talisha, for sending me this for my birthday. During Thanksgiving, my husband's iron broke it died it stopped working and so i gave him the professional iron that he got me i think two years ago for my christmas present and i gave him that one because i have since i started sewing don't like to share my iron <laughs> because um i don't want to mess up my projects so um i gave him that one and then i upgraded on black friday to the oliso iron the mimi g one so this is the box and I'm sure everyone and their mama has seen the Mimi G iron, but I will give you a peek. So this is what the inside of the box looks like. And the iron is right inside there. I had to take away all of the foam packaging in order to make it fit because I could not get it to fit back in the box the way it was when I received it. So this is the gorgeous iron. And I have used this twice only. <laughs> I was really sick, so I wasn't sewing or ironing anything for quite a while. But what's really neat about this is that when you set it down, this lever extends and it prevents the iron from staying flat on your ironing board and burning anything. So I really think this is nice. It has some really cool technology in the handle to register when you're holding and when you're not holding the iron. So it's nice, it's powerful, it does heat up really well. So I'm excited to have this iron in my stash and it's going to be a wonderful addition to my sewing supplies. And I'm so excited to make some more projects where I can test out the iron further. So in addition to that Black Friday sale, I actually got lots of Christmas presents for other people, but Cashmerette was having a sale for all of their Cashmerette Club 
members. And if you were a member, you got 40% off of all of their printed and PDF patterns. So I took advantage of this because there are two patterns that I have been wanting, but didn't want to purchase the PDF because I knew that I would have to tape together all the pages. And these particular patterns have tons of pages. One of them is one of those cult favorites, like tons of people own this pattern and sew it up and for good reason. If you don't already know this about cashmere patterns, they have bust cup sizes and a very large size range. So they really draft for a woman of many different shapes and sizes and I love that. So this particular pattern is the Upton dress and skirt and it comes with so many different variations and they all mix and match together. Hopefully you can see that okay. There's tons of bodices, about eight bodices, eight sleeves, six skirts, and it says on the front that you can mix and match for 350 plus different garments. So I'm really excited to have this in paper form. And so my plan is to trace out first the bodice that I think will fit me the best, the size. I'll do a test muslin of that to see if it fits as well as it I think it's going to fit and then I will cut out the pattern directly from here instead of taping together PDFs tracing off my size and all of that so I'm really excited to have this and at 40% off I really could not beat that I'm really excited about this now the other pattern that I picked up is the rose clear dress and this one I love because it has so many tears but I absolutely love this version here. And ever since I saw it, I have been really wanting it. So I'm excited that I finally have it. And again, I don't have to print off and tape together the pages. I can just cut it out. And I'm really, really eager to sew this up. Although it is a dress that is probably gonna be more suited to the spring and summer because the fabric suggestions are lightweight woven fabrics such as linen, rayon, cotton, and double gauze. It's not gonna be a very warm dress. So I will hold on to this guy and I will sew it up when it's a bit warmer outside. But those are the two patterns that I picked up on Black Friday. In October, I celebrated my 14th wedding anniversary and my husband gifted me with a gift card to Joanne. And one of the things that I picked up was a really cool piece of denim. And so I have plans to sew up a really nice bomber jacket. And let me show you the fabric first so that you can see what it looks like. This is the gorgeous fabric. It has this awesome stitching all over it and the color is so great. It's a light blue denim with lots of different textures on it. So pretty. And I got four yards of it. And the reason why I got so much is because I envisioned making a little skirt to go along with the bomber jacket. The pattern that I've selected for my bomber jacket is the Cashmere Club Kimball bomber jacket. And this is what it looks like. And the reason why I selected this particular pattern is because I am loving making garments with cup sizes, especially when we're talking about outerwear. I find it really difficult to purchase outerwear that fits my body appropriately. If I get the size that accommodates my bust and isn't too tight, a lot of times it is too wide in the shoulder area and in all the other parts of the actual jacket. So I'm excited to make a bomber jacket that is custom for my bust. I own lots of bomber jackets. Next to jean jackets, bomber jackets are my second favorite type of jacket. So I'm really excited to make this pattern up. I'm a huge fan of cashmere patterns because of the fact that they have cup sizes. I picked up some additional trim in order to go along with my bomber jacket. So to go with this denim fabric that I selected, I found this gorgeous ribbing on Amazon and this is what it looks like. It's a darker shade of denim. And I was able to find on Wawak the perfect matching shade of zipper for the jacket. So this is what it looks like. Isn't that perfect? The next thing that I picked up is a pattern by Vicky Sews and is the t-shirt pattern called Alia. Now this pattern is very similar to the Lydia and Naomi cube tee that I recently made. However, I think that the style of it is a little bit more boxy and more towards the vision that I had when I was doing my sketches for my fall capsule wardrobe, which has turned into my winter capsule wardrobe because I haven't finished all of the things on the list, okay? But I think that this one is going to 
really look like what I envisioned. And so I plan to use this with several different jersey fabrics that I have in my stash. I've already cut the pattern and it's ready to go. And it's a very quick and easy sew. So I can imagine that I can do some batch sewing. So this is definitely on the to-do list and I'm really eager to sew that up. Now that we've discussed everything that I've purchased since I last spoke with you, I'm going to share with you my Indie Stitch unboxing. If you're not familiar with Indie Stitch, Indie Stitch is a monthly sewing subscription service where you receive a garment pattern all the supplies that you need to complete the garment, as well as some additional sewing goodies every single month. This is what the box looks like. And I'm really excited about this box because it's something extra cozy. And I wanna put this out there for you guys. I get really excited every time I get this box and it definitely feels like a wonderful gift in the mail. If you are still looking for gifts for your loved ones who love to sew, I highly recommend that you check out this sewing subscription and purchase your loved one one of these kits because it definitely will bring a smile to their face when they receive a project that they can work on. And I love all of the hand holding that comes along with the Indie Stitch subscription service. For example, they have an amazing Facebook group and in that Facebook group, you can talk to other sewists who are also subscribed to the service. You can ask questions, share ideas, see other people's projects, and you can also watch sew along videos that will walk you through step-by-step step on how to complete every project. Now, you don't have to necessarily subscribe to the service. You can just buy a box straight out. But if you do decide to bless someone or even yourself with a subscription service, it is a very good value for what you receive and you won't be disappointed. Let's take a look at this month's box. The pattern that was included in this month's box is the Grab a Cup of Cardi by Pattern Emporium. And this is a pattern that I've been wanting to sew up. I'm really excited to have received it. It is this cardigan here and I believe it comes in different lengths. So that is really nice. It tells you on this front card how to access the PDF version of the pattern as well as the pattern instructions. And then right along the side here, there is a QR code that will take you directly to the sew along for this pattern. On the back of the card, there is more information that lets you know what's included in the box. And this is what it looks like. So in this month's box, there were seven different fabric options that you could choose from and each cut of fabric is three yards which is a generous amount of fabric i'm really excited about that and what i love about the fact that there are seven different selections is that you can really customize this pattern to suit your wardrobe needs by being able to see different color options Every month you will receive an email from Indie Stitch that has a hyperlink that you can click on. When you click on it, it'll take you over to a selection option where you can decide which fabric you'd like to receive in your box. Additionally, there will be a video and in the video, Amber of Indie Stitch is holding up each of the pieces of fabric so that you can see what the color is, what the texture looks like, and also how the fabric drapes. I think that is so very nice and it helps you to be able to select the fabric that is best for your wardrobe needs. So I absolutely love that and I'm super impressed with the fact that there were seven different fabric choices that you could choose from this month. It made it very hard to select the one that I felt would be best for me. In addition to the fabric, you will receive one spool of thread and two home sewing machine needles. And there's some other sewing goodies that I also received. But let me share with you the fabric that I picked. The fabric that I picked is a French terry. It is 90% polyester, 7% rayon, and 3% spandex. And one of the neat things about this fabric is that it comes in a nice package just like this it's a thin plastic package and right on top there's a sticker that tells you what fabric you've received and also how to care for it okay let's open up this fabric so this fabric is really soft and it has this really gorgeous animal print on it and i want to show you the thickness of the fabric. So it's not a super thick fabric, but it's definitely going to be perfect for a little cardigan that I can wear around the house. I'm really happy about my selection. Um, it's a very soft fabric on the outside and it definitely has that French terry looping on the back. 
really nice beautiful fabric and i think i'm going to get a lot of wear out of the cardigan once i make it out of this gorgeous fabric and again it is three yards of fabric i have to tell you that i have been very impressed with every cut of fabric that i have received from indie stitch amber indie stitch does a very good job of selecting quality fabrics that she sends out in her boxes i've been very impressed with everything that i've received but this is a very nice soft french terry it doesn't seem to have a lot of stretch to it but that's okay because it is a layering piece it is not a fitted garment so i'm really excited about this and i can't wait to sew up my cardigan in this amazing animal print french terry fabric okay let's see what else is in the box the next thing i see in the box is actually some buttons and this button kit it looks like they are gray buttons so they match really perfectly with this animal print on the fabric because that also is gray it's a really good matching and these buttons are gorgeous they have a really nice design on them i'll hold it up close so that you can see what it looks like so this is what the button looks like it's a really beautiful gray button that's going to be such a nice accent to this cardigan and there is some interfacing for the button placket of the cardigan as well the quality of interfacing that i've received from indie stitch has been so nice but this particular interfacing has a different feel to it than some of the other pieces that i've received in the past and it's the perfect width that you need for a button pla placket so there is no waste whatsoever with this cut of interfacing i really love that the next thing in the box is this seam ripper and this is actually my favorite type of seam ripper because it has a rubber handle and it makes it so much easier to hold when you are unpicking so i love that there was a seam ripper in here and to be perfectly honest with you i have a bad habit of taking my projects that have to be unpicked in different rooms of my house and misplacing my seam rippers so i personally can never have too many of those guys the next thing in the box is the thread and as you can see it's the same color as the fabric and this is guterman thread there is also two ballpoint needles and these are 75 11 needles and they come in this nice little package so you don't lose them and lastly, we have here some stainless steel glass head dressmaker pins. And I love these guys because you can actually iron over them and they don't melt under your iron. It's so nice to have pins that are basically indestructible when you are prepping your seams for sewing. I love that. Here is a copy of the printed pattern. And as you can see, it is on this sturdy paper. And one of the things that I love is that the sizes are in different colors. So you will not have trouble finding your size and cutting out the correct size. I love when patterns are printed in color. So this is really great. I'm really excited to try out the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cup of Cardi. And I can't wait to give you a review of this one because I definitely plan to sew this up this winter season. Lastly in the box, there is a bonus item and this is a lip balm in coconut and it says it's moisturizing and soothing and this is what it looks like. Really, really nice. So those are all the items that I received in this month's Indie Stitch box. I hope you enjoyed watching this unboxing. I highly recommend this sewing subscription service. If you are interested in signing up with Indie Stitch, please do use the links below in the information section of this video. It is an affiliate link, so I do receive a small commission if you purchase using that link. However, everything that I receive from that commission goes right back into my channel. So thank you so much for your support. If you do use my link and if you choose not to, that's okay as well. This is an amazing subscription that I think that you should give a try. Okay, let's talk about the things that I've been working on in this absence. So one of the things I started and didn't finish was the Pattern Scout Birdie Button Up and this was a part of my fall capsule wardrobe. And so far what I have done here is I attached the front and the back pieces together as well as added the sleeves and i was working on the button placket and the fabric is so thin this is a cotton lawn that is very lightweight fabric that i purchased from la finch fabrics it's so lightweight that i really didn't see myself wearing it um currently because it's a bit cold outside so i set this off to the side to work on some warmer projects and i haven't revisited it yet but really all i have left to do is to add the collar 
add the cuffs and the buttons and this will be done. So I really should just knock it out. <laughs> the other thing that I've done is I've already cut out my lander pants in my wearable muslin fabric and that is that leopard print fabric. Let me hold it up. So in this fabric, so it's already been cut out. I just need to go ahead and sew it. So that's ready to go. And I don't know what happened to me, you guys. I started these projects. I was really, really eager to get them finished. And then I got distracted with Thanksgiving and I was like, do I wanna wear any of those projects for Thanksgiving? I don't think so. Let me just make what I wanna wear for Thanksgiving and I'll come back to those later. <laughs> and then I haven't revisited them yet because I got so sick. The other thing that I prepped is the Nomi ME2052. I cut out both the blouse and the jeans. And so this is another project that I really want to wear now, but I just have not made time to sew yet, or I just hadn't had the energy to sew yet. But all of the pattern pieces have been cut out for the jeans in this gorgeous recycled denim that I got from Blackbird Fabric. And I also cut the blouse out of this amazing fabric that I got from Indie Stitch a couple of months ago. And it's just going to be the most beautiful outfit once I complete it. Um, but right now it is just cut and waiting to be sewn in this project bucket. Those are the things that I have started on and have not finished yet, but I hope to sew up probably between now and the end of Christmas break. There are also items that I think I can wear, maybe not the blouse unless I layer it, but definitely the two pairs of pants and the one button up, the, M the Nomi pattern button up. So I definitely want to complete those projects. The last thing that I've been working on that I'll probably complete before I actually make the things I just shared with you is the Mercier jumpsuit. I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is another Cashmere Club pattern and it is a gorgeous jumpsuit that also, like all the other patterns, comes in cup sizes. It is meant to be made out of a knit fabric and I have chosen a double knit that is so beautiful. It is this gorgeous bright green and it, if you look closely, there is a rib to this fabric. It is just so pretty and soft and I cannot wait to sew this up. I plan to wear this jumpsuit when we go see the Broadway Lion King next weekend. So this is going to get made up before the other is because I actually plan to wear this soon. And also I'd like to have a cute little green jumpsuit for the holidays. So that is the last thing that I have prepped and that I am currently working. Let's talk about what I actually completed during this time. So I actually did a collaboration with Talisha and we were both sick. And so that video has not been filmed yet, but I am working on it, friends. But just to give you a little sneak peek, I will insert a picture of what I put together. And you can actually see, I think, out of the corner of the screen, one of the items over there. Um, but we decided that we were going to collaborate on completing blazers and a two-piece garment, okay? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a wearable muslin for the pants that I had put in my fall capsule wardrobe plans. I drew a sketch, I shared that information with you guys in a previous video. And I decided on the Vicky Sews Daphna pattern rather than doing the uh, Vogue pattern that I originally shared. And this is what it looks like. It's just a nice pleated front pair of pants. What I learned from making these pants is that the size that I selected based off of my measurements is at least two sizes too big, which was perfect for the vibe that I was going for for the outfit that I created. And I definitely found some Pinterest inspiration before I even planned my project. So I kind of tweaked this pattern in order to look more like the examples that I had seen on Pinterest, but I learned that I picked a size US 12, which is 44 in Vicky Sew's patterns, when I probably should have made a size eight because these, these pants are oversized. Also, I used a brushed cotton, which had a bit of stretch to it, and that may also have contributed to the overall oversized fit of the pants. But I still looked cute and I was comfortable and I definitely will be wearing these pants because they are so cozy and comfortable. But this was something that got completed. I also made a blazer and without giving you too much information now, I'll just tell you what it was that I made. It's Simplicity S9825 and it is this blazer here um, to go along with the pants. And I can't wait to share that video with you. It's coming soon, so stay tuned. Lastly, I want to share with 
with you some updates that I did to my sewing space. I added some beautiful touches that I think have made it a little bit more functional and also more beautiful. So I hope you like those changes. I'll insert a clip now. And one of the things I forgot to mention is that I've got a mirror so that I can see the full length of my garments for this whole time I've been sewing I did not have a full length mirror and it's very compact and it hangs on the door which is perfect it doesn't take up a lot of space when the doors open nobody knows it's there it's just the perfect little addition to my small sewing space so here's a clip of what that looks like now I wanted to give you a little bit of an update of my sewing space. I made some changes that I hope will help me to stay organized and it also makes my space to look a little bit more beautiful. But you've all seen my dream box and this is what it looks like when it's partially closed. Um, and I do all of my sewing, cutting, prepping, crafting here in this space but I wanted to show you what I added. So it's been a while since I gave you a tour of this room and for my birthday, I decided I wanted to update some things. So as you can see in this corner, I have a really nice eight cube storage system that I got on Amazon. I'll insert a link if you wanna check it out. And I got these beautiful bins to hold all of my fabric that I had been hiding in different places in the house. So all of my fabric has been neatly folded and placed in these cubes. And I'll give you a closer look so that you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, we'll just pull this one since it's closest. But as you can see, I have lots and lots of folded fabrics in here and each of these cubes is a 13 by 13 so it has plenty of space to hold lots of fabric and right above my cubes I have this sign that I purchased at Michael's a while back and I love it and it's been in a corner where no one could see it for a very long time above my Cricut machine. And so I moved it out here so that everyone could see and it says make things happen, really pretty. And a couple of candles that I've had for a while that were in my dream box. And I went ahead and printed one of the photos from one of my sewn magazine features. And this was one of my favorite ones, one of the ones I got probably the most love out of the, all the pictures that I submitted. And so I thought it would be fun to print that out. And then I have pictures of my childcare families, but also I have this gorgeous painting that I got from Target. And if you didn't know, they have lots of beautiful black art at Target that you can purchase. And it's very gorgeous. So I love that. It definitely goes in with all the color schemes that I have going on in this room. And if, if I take you back, you can kind of see what that side of the room looks like. This is the couch that turns into a pullout bed. And I believe this is a queen size pullout. And I've had this for quite a while. During work, I have it covered with a cover to protect it. But on the weekends, I take it off so that my family can enjoy sitting on it. And in the corner there, I have added a coat hanger. And so my current coats that I am wearing and swapping out, I plan to hang there. And eventually when I get into pattern drafting, I will go ahead and hang my patterns up there. So as I create my own patterns, I will put them on hooks and hang them on this coat rack. I saw someone do that and I thought that was a genius idea on how to store your pattern papers once you've created them. So anyways, those are the additions that I've added to my classroom slash sewing space. And I just love the way it looks and it definitely is functional and beautiful and that's exactly what I needed. So here's a little peek at what I've added to my sewing space. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed all the things that I shared with you. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a fantastic day and a wonderful week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.